The European Union is never bad or as good it seems last week's enlargement summit was an example of. The 27-nation bloc at its best and worst of formula has been found to reach an agreement on starting membership negotiations with Ukraine, which is trying to prevent Russia from seizing more territory. The deal, which Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban had vowed bloc, sparked triumphant headlines that made it seem as if the bloc was finally grasping its historic responsibility to extend the sphere of freedom and prosperity in Europe Russia's borders. But next morning, going out coffee while the decision for accession talks was being made, Orban threatened to deprive Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky by vetoing agreement on a much more urgently needed four-year, 50 billion euro aid package Kiev. Funds he desperately needed to continue his fight for survival against Russian aggression. Suddenly, Europe appeared have failed Ukraine in its time of need. Just as the Republican-dominated U.S. Congress refused to approve more financial aid Kiev. European governments, which showed Ukraine light at end of tunnel, were refusing give fuel to Ukraine keep stalled train on track. This impression may also be misleading. There's a good chance EU ministers will unanimously approve aid package next month or find another way get the money. After Orban had a happy moment to show his domestic audience that he has power stop Europe if necessary. To Kiev, EU and national authorities are trying to find a solution if Orban continues to block the fiscal package. The other 26 members contribute to the Intergovernmental Fund for Ukraine which will be managed by the European Commission and be subject to reform conditions. Hungary's GDP-related contribution is already negligible and will not block the decision. A similar procedure was used to circumvent Britain's veto of EU fiscal deal in midst of Eurozone crisis in 2011, when UK was leading Union's oddball team. As always, the EU is adept at mixing things up and keeping things on track. But it manages to make historical decisions about Europe's geopolitical future seem complex and uncertain. Historian and Guardian columnist Timothy Garden Ash has rightly framed this summit in advance as a pivotal moment in the epic struggle between liberalism and populism for the soul of Europe. The result was a low scoring draw. Of course, Europe has made a historic decision that should ultimately mean that there will be no gray area between the democratic, integrated West and the Russian Federation. But EU leaders handled this with warnings and in a way that called into question the credibility of their commitments. It is easier to decide initiate a long and uncertain negotiation process than immediately commit. Significant resources keep the barbarians away from the gates. By time Ukraine is ready to join EU, current generation of European leaders will be out of office for a long time. Assuming it survives war as a stable democracy.